Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you today? Excellent. Well, today we're going to do something that I'm pretty excited about. We're here in Los Angeles, as you can tell, and uh, this is something I tried to actually put into motion for about the last three months. Um, I went in somewhere. You guys were with me. I saw something that I was really inspired by, something that I thought was really great that this place was doing, and, um, and then I found out later that the guy who owns it went to the same school as I did. So uh, I've been just trying to get into contact with him because I'd like to, for him to tell you about what he's doing. Um, I think maybe a lot of you will find it interesting and maybe also be inspired to participate in it. So this should be a good vlog. I've been looking forward to it. Like I said, we've just been trying to find a time over the last couple of months where it worked out for both of our schedules. Today's the day. So we're going to head over to Koreatown and uh, well, you'll see when we get there. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, let's go vlogging. Well, my friends, this is what we're gonna be vlogging today. I wandered in here a couple of months ago to have a couple of guitars set up, and what they were doing in here blew my mind, so I had to share it with you guys. So to give you guys a little bit of background, um, I was obsessed with music ever since I could remember being alive, and what turned me on to guitar primarily was seeing Slash play. Um, when I was 14 years old, I had a job as a busboy, and I saved up my money, and I went out and bought my first acoustic guitar. Uh, I got obsessed with playing, and that wasn't enough, so I saved up more money, and I bought an electric guitar for a couple hundred dollars. Um, after a little while, that wasn't enough, and I saved up and bought an even better guitar. In every instance, I, as a 14, 15-year-old kid, was buying my own guitars. And I'm going to help share with you today um, something that might help you buy your first guitar, or if you're looking for a great guitar, this is something I wish I would have known when I was entering buying guitars and spending my own money. I wish a place like this was around. Um, they did not ask me to come and do this originally. This was something that when I saw what they were doing, I loved it so much that I asked them, can I come and vlog this? I would love to share with uh, my audience and everyone what you're doing. Um, especially, like I said, because I started out buying all of my own equipment. So we're going to check out what All Among Guitars is now doing that I think is changing the game for everyone. So here we are inside, and this is really what excited me was that when I came in here, I started looking around and I started seeing all these beautiful guitars on the walls, and they were all a brand that I'd never heard of. Um, they were called Wolf Guitars, and the more I started asking, they started telling me, oh, well, these are our guitars. And we're coming up with a new um, guitar company called All In One, named after this store, and that's what we're here to vlog today. So if you know nothing about guitars, you've probably heard the words Fender, Gibson, and uh, that's one of those things that I think is a common misconception that people think there are only two real guitars that you can trust to buy. And that's really why I wanted to do this vlog because I saw these guitars and I looked and I said, okay, they're beautiful, but how do they sound? And then I went online and I start watching these guys that can really play a guitar and these guitars sound amazing. Not only amazing, they're some of the most affordable guitars I've ever seen and they come with a hard shell case. I just bought a case for a new guitar um, about two weeks ago, and that case was a hundred bucks, and I got one of the cheaper ones. So take a look at these guitars, and this is what Jin and the guys at All In One are doing here. These are the Wolf models. You can see the name up there. It's more like a Telecaster type body. And then here's their new All In One guitar. So this is Jin. Jin, you're the man who runs and operates all-in-one guitars, correct? Yes, I am. And you went to Musicians Institute as well, did you not? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, yeah so we have that in common. And when I came in here, I started looking at your guitars. I loved them. And you started telling me that you have these guitars built, they get shipped here, and then you, pers you guys all set them up so that when the customer gets them shipped to their door, they don't have to do anything. The guitar is ready to play in the best possible position or the best possible shape that it can be in. I thought that was almost Im impossible to believe because those are what setups are usually $50. A case is usually a hundred dollars. So right there, you're $150 invested into a guitar before you even have the guitar itself. And yet you're selling guitars for a little over $300 in some cases. Mm -hmm, yeah. 
That's amazing, and they sound amazing. Yeah, I mean, but uh, not only setup. Setup costs only fifty dollar. Yeah. But what we are doing here is, um, okay. See the tape there. Yeah. Um, okay. When I got when I op when we opened the guitar, we checked all the dressing condition. I mean, fret condition. Most of the guitar is really good, but even though you uh, check the Gibson or whatever high end guitar. The fret is not completely even. Yeah. You'll get buzzing on the string sometimes. Yeah, if, you, if you play like high action, it's no problem. But if you want to lower the action, that's going to be already a problem. So I like untighten the string and check the all the leveling and then I do fret dressing. Yeah, you do. I mean, you literally do everything. Every guitar. Because every not even one single guitar has a perfect Right condition. Absolutely, and no two guard, no guitars, um, no two guitars are ever the same. People don't know that. You can look at two guitars and think it'll be the same, but it, they never sound the same. same. And and here's the other thing I wanted to bring up, um, with you being a new company and it's a name that people may not recognize yet. One of the concerns a lot of people have are. Can I trust that guitar? And one of the things I tell people now is I said, you can't even trust a Fender and Gibson anymore because the quality sometimes isn't the same. But now there are, are replicas and counterfeits out there that people buy overseas. And then the guitars are sometimes made out of plywood, glued together. Sometimes the, the, the um, pickups are noisy, but your guitars are mahogany. Like that, that's a mahogany guitar. It's got Grover tuners. I mean, those are the things that usually people are like, well, I'm going to have to replace the tuners. I'm going to have to get new new pickups. And I've never seen one person complain about anything on your guitar. And you make it probably the most affordable guitar I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I believe so. I, yeah, because we are, our staff is really, really picky and or like professional player. So yeah. When, when I like grab the guitar, I know this is good or not. Yeah, you're not making guitars just for... For people that come in, you're you're making guitars for people that play professionally for their career, mm -hmm. all the way down to somebody buying their first guitar, and they're affordable for both. I, I was telling everybody before I started, almost every guitar I own, I've purchased myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always looking for how do you how do you tell somebody what's a guitar, what to buy if they don't know anything about guitars. And I think this is a really good first step. I mean, everybody, everybody has their own opinion. Yeah. Because sounding guitar is like really important, but. You gotta play that guitar. So when you play guitar, you gotta have really nice feeling. That means nice setup. So nice that relief, and then uh, to have nice uh, setup, you gotta have really nice uh, fret condition. Mm -hmm. so people miss that. So without nice level fret, you cannot. Right. Get sometimes you have to file them down a little bit. You have to do a lot of things to the frets. Yeah, sometimes it's almost impossible to customer do that. So even though. And they ruin their guitar doing it themselves sometimes. Definitely. I, 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 in fact, my first guitar, um, I was getting buzzing back when I was 15 years old, and I asked my guitar teacher, mm -hmm. hey, how do I fix that? And he said, you got to address the chest rod, but don't ask me. The first time I did it, I broke one, mm -hmm. and it sounded like a shotgun going off. And you don't want to replace a neck on a guitar. And the best, like, most misunderstanding the method of adjust the neck, chest rod, most of the time, you don't need to uh, adjust trust rod. You gotta lower the saddle or like uh, the saddle on acoustic or whatever, like electric. Thing. Yeah, yeah, you have to lower it. Yeah, but people see it, it's actually too high, they like tend to adjust trust rod. Yeah, and and for people that don't know, their truss rod is a is a rod that goes all the way through the neck of the guitar, and you basically adjust it with a wrench, like an Allen wrench mm -hmm. type deal, and um, and it relieves tension so that sometimes if your neck is bowed because it's wood and temperature changes or whatever, sometimes that'll fix it. But like he's saying, a lot of times that's not the that's not even the case. Mm -hmm. And the high action is also because of the knot tie. So factory they want to be really safe. So. Not tied between like action, the fret to string mm -hmm. here. Yeah, it's really high. Not all of guitar, but many guitar is really high. Yeah, some people like the strings a little high off the frets like that, but, but not many. Code to like a bad intonation. Yeah. So when you play open string and press on the first string, it's sharpy because your your knot tied is kind of a little too high. So the customer they don't have any tool to low, uh, lower the, the knot. So we have but. Uh, no fire, so we. I have really good sense, so it takes most of the routine. It takes like more than 10 minutes or 20 minutes, even an hour, to get the really nice low right. height. But 
for me, I can do like less than five, uh, five minutes. That's because amazing. I, yeah, I, you just yeah. have like a sense, like a natural yeah. feel for the guitars. And also I know how like hard I have to push that. After that, we also make the surface really smooth using knife. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You kind of shave it a little bit. I mean, that's all secret, but it's an easy to hear, but really difficult to do that. Now let now let everybody know: Is that common? If if you buy a guitar uh, from Fender or Gibson or anybody like that, will they go through all these steps for you? Do they generally? I I've never noticed that that was the case. Um, because I brought a Fender into you that was brand new, and you had to adjust it because it was buzzing at certain because frets. How many employees they have? So everybody has different like, skills. Absolutely, level. there's so, no quality consistency. Yeah, maybe With, master builder, master builder, or custom shop, they might have a better like uh, color control, but. I don't know about this. So but as far as your guitars, it's really what two or three guys that are working on them. Yeah, so we got five guys. Yeah, you got five guys and you're all pretty much experts at this mm -hmm. and you do it all day. So it's like you have a real pro working on your guitar when you buy it. I think that's amazing. Yeah, every day at most we go like no more than 10 guitar. You cannot do that. So. Yeah, you have to take your time and focus on them. Yeah, but that's still a lot. I mean, um, I have I've recently got a guitar from companies that custom build them, and um, and and you can watch the progress online to see. And they're only getting five, six done a week sometimes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you want to plug in and play a little bit of that and let people hear what your SG sounds like? Classic clean sound. Also a popular guitar for jazz players. Here's one of the Les Pauls. Now these I just thought were amazing because not only, if you notice right here, is it a beautiful guitar. I mean that thing is amazing looking. But you can also get left handed options, which sometimes you can't. And sometimes if you do get one you have to custom order it and it takes a lot longer. 
I think that's pretty cool. Here we have a guitar being set up right now. I absolutely love that guitar. I just, I think SGs have one of those classic rock and roll sounds that you just, you, you can't match. There's the hollow body. The semi hollow body. There's a small, small body size. Like. Oh, it's the semi hollow body. Nice guitars though. Is there anything that you haven't done yet? Is there any style that you, you have coming out that you want to let people know of that? Um, I mean, literally we can make any kind of model. So we just... It's just taking time to release them all. Yeah. yeah we, we not a big like company. So no. Satellite. And all in one, you've been around for what? Like as far as the guitars themselves, what? Two months, three months maybe before you were doing Wolf guitars. Yeah, it's about like three months. Yeah, three months into this. So... I think that's amazing. We sold out most of our, our guitar, but we didn't order that much, but... Yeah, I thought that was cool. I want to tell everybody the reason that it took us three months to get to film this is because every time I, um, one of us would contact each other about doing it, mm -hmm. usually you'd say, we have full orders and I have to set up guitars, L let's talk in a month or something. I mean, that's how busy you are, but I think these are a phenomenal deal for people. Like I said, um, just, I mean, this SG is what, 400-ish dollars? Somewhere around there? Yeah, 399. Oh, it's, th yeah, it's 399, so if you... Oh, but it doesn't include any gig bag or kit, because some customer already had their gig bag. Oh, right, right. But it comes set up, I mean, that's, that's a heck of a deal. I mean, you can't even get an Epiphone for that price, to be honest. I don't wanna say anything bad about the guitar, but you see, if you compare the sound, every feeling, yeah, you see how our guitar is great. Yeah, the sound speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And of course, they don't just make guitars, they also make basses, so you can get an all-in-one or a Wolf bass. Both brands are made by uh, by Jin here. Uh, take a look at that. That's a six-string bass. <laughs> That's Billy Sheehan talk. And then check this out. They also have a fretless bass. The options are amazing for such a young company. I just think that's amazing that you guys have stuff like that. Holy smoke. So Jin just said, uh, since I like that guitar so much, you just said I can have it. You're just, just going to give it to me. That's amazing, man. Thank you. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> so cool of you, Jin. Thank you. Holy cow, what a nice dude. That was, I mean, I just wanted to come in here and share this with you guys because um, I know a lot of people that watch my channel um, maybe can't um, physically go out and do traveling, they can't do other things, but a hobby is always a great thing. Um, I think playing music stimulates your mind, your body, your fingers, and it's just fun. So that was the other reason I wanted to do this. Um, it's it's a rather affordable hobby to get into if you're looking for something to take up a lot of your time and to be a lot of fun. So check it out. Go check out All-in-One Guitars. Um, they're taking pre-orders for these. In fact, the guitar that he gave me, he said, you're in luck. That's the last one I have right now until the new order comes in. So he said, it's all yours. So how about that? Pretty cool. That was absolutely crazy that he gave me this. I couldn't believe it. Like he said in there, it didn't come with a case. But when he said he was giving me that guitar, I said, I, I got to support this somehow. I said, can I buy a gig bag or a case or something? So I went ahead and purchased a case for it. Man, what a beauty. I, I honestly can't believe he gave me this one because I had emailed him about a month ago and saw that these had come out. And I had said then, I'm like, hey, how many of those do you have? I think I might want to get one. And he's like, oh, I'm pretty much out of them already. So must have saved me one. Pretty cool. There's the logo. It's even got a little cross at the top. There's the mayor, the mayor of Hollywood. And I hope everyone enjoyed the road trip that Job Breck and I just took because for me, you know, I knew I wanted to squeeze in three vlogs on that trip. One of which being the thousandth vlog. I thought Winchester Mystery House, where the Grateful Dead formed, an Altamont Speedway would be perfect. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed getting to see them myself. Personally, I was completely floored that we got in to see Altamont. I had no idea it was closed. And when the people that live there let me go in there, I just, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I've always loved watching Gimme Shelter. I guess maybe loved is the wrong word to say, but I've always been interested in that documentary. Even has the Cheech Marin chain steering wheel inside 
So a lot of people decided they don't like these scooters being in town, so what they do is they decide to destroy them. Jokes on them, I talked to a friend who knows the accountant for these companies and said that these things only cost them like eight or eleven dollars to to manufacture, so keep destroying them all you want, they're gonna keep sticking around. Well, this guy has a bit of a sense of humor on him. He's got the silly string fine that they put out, the signs they always put out in Hollywood for Halloween. When I first moved here, they didn't have that rule. And the night after Halloween on Hollywood Boulevard, it would be coated in silly string. So that's, I think, what provoked that whole idea. Oh, check that out. Not only a Hoosier, but Rosie the Riveter. Look at this gentleman. Oh, hello. <laughs> I saw your shirts hanging here and I just said, hey, you know, I got, I, I got to put this on. People have to see what Hollywood's really like sometimes. Well, Lionhearts, we're going to call it a night. If you've ever been interested in the guitar, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you were ever interested in purchasing a guitar, I can't think of a better place to do it. All in one guitars online. All in one guitars.com, I believe. Have a great night, everyone. We will see you all tomorrow. Good night and goodbye.